Good morning, kids. Today, we are going to be taking a little break from our New Testament study of Paul and his letters. Um, actually, last week was the last lesson that we will be looking at, at Paul and his letters. We're actually going to be looking at other books of the Bible. Um, but today, we're going to take a step back and go to the Old Testament and um, if you guys have your Bibles out, today we're going to be looking at a book that's right in the middle. So if you open your books in the middle of the Bible, you should be in this book called the Book of Psalms. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're not going to be looking at the whole book. We're just going to do um, a brief little um, lesson on the book of Psalms because we have not learned that much about the Psalms and this week we started our online VBS and the online VBS theme is the book of Psalms and we're looking at different Psalms every week. Today we're going to be looking at four Psalms but just a quick run through of each of them. I'm not going to go super detailed and I will share my screen here so we can take a look. So we're looking at the book of Psalms, like I said again, and um, as I told the VBS kids this week, the book of Psalms, the name Psalms, it starts with the letter P, but that P is silent. That's why we call it the book of Psalms, because the P is silent, okay? And Psalms is a plural word. Um, each Psalm is its own Psalm but all of them together make the book of psalms so there's a lot of psalms uh, hundreds of psalms and the key word for today is that the book of psalms what it's about is it's about praise praise to god it's a book that a psalm is basically a song or a poem that's meant to be sung um, just like when we are in church we sing songs right we sing worship songs to god and so this book was written thousands of years ago and it's a book of all different songs of worship to god praise songs is what we would call them so the authors of the psalms it's not just one author there's many authors actually we've been looking at the letters of paul all the books of the bible that are letters of paul it's just one author it's paul but the book of psalms is different it has a lot of different authors and it's a collection of songs from a lot of different people who wrote the songs um the one of the biggest authors in the book of Psalms is King David. I think many of you guys have learned about King David. You might remember that King David was the one who was the youngest of all his brothers, and he was a shepherd, and he also um, defeated Goliath, the big giant Goliath, right? So King David was someone who loved music, and God gave him the gift of music, and he wrote more than half of the psalms that we have in the bible and there are many other authors of the psalms but king david is one of the most famous ones since he wrote more than half of the psalms so today we're just talking about four types of psalms there are more than just four but we're going to be talking about these four major types okay so the first type of psalm that we have is a praise psalm. Can you guess what a praise psalm is might be about? Well, a praise psalm, as it says, is a song that is about praising God for who he is and what he has done. And the basic idea is God is good. So we're going to look at a praise psalm today, and some of you who are at online VBS will recognize it. We have Psalm 8, that's the chapter, it's like chapter 8, but it's really just the eighth song in the book of Psalms. And here, let's read it together. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. 
When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And basically this psalm is a praise psalm, praising God for being a creator king. Lord here, we learned, um, some of us learned that that is actually the name of God, Yahweh. And his name is majestic. It points to the fact that he is king, king of the whole universe. And his name is great in all the earth because he's the creator of it. So this is a praise psalm, praising God for being a creator king. So our second type of psalm that we're gonna talk about today is what's called a lament psalm. Do any of you guys know what that word lament means? Lament basically is when you're really down and you're sad or you're scared and you're crying out, you're lamenting about something. Um, a lot of times when baby Ellie has to take a nap, or she has to go to sleep. She usually cries because she knows that means, oh, mommy's gonna leave me alone in my crib now, and she doesn't like it. So she laments about going to sleep and taking naps because she doesn't want to be left alone in her crib. So lament psalms are about crying out to God in bad times. And the basic idea is life is tough, but God can help. So let's look at a lament psalm. And this lament psalm, is going to be the psalm that we're looking at at online VBS this week. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So this is a lament song. It doesn't sound that sad, but this is kind of the key right here. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Basically, um, King David is writing about how he's going through a really tough time. I'm walking through this, this valley, a dark valley, and he probably feels scared or he feels sad or he feels alone, but he's reminding himself, I have nothing to fear because God is with me. Okay, so that's lament psalm. The third psalm that we have is a royal psalm. What do you think of when you hear the word royal? You probably think of kings and queens and princes and princesses. That's exactly what royal psalms are about. It's about giving honor to God for his reign as a king and victory. Back in the day when people wrote these psalms, long time ago, thousands of years ago, a lot of the kings would go to battle because people would battle and fight for different land. And so kings would be the ones who are leading the military, the soldiers, the armies into battle. And they would, um, if they win, they have victory, right? So the royal psalms, a lot of times have um, these, these words that point to God having victory or God being a king. And the basic idea is God is king. So let's look at um, this psalm. 
this psalm is kind of long, so I didn't paste all the words. I just pasted this, um, this verse in it that tells us that God is king. Psalm 45, verse 6 says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. So you see these words here that all point to God being a king. A throne is what a king sits on. It's a big giant chair that um, a king would sit on and people would sometimes come and talk to the king and he would sit on the throne in a high position while people would bow before him and be lower. A scepter is something that a king holds, right? To show his power. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom, okay? So kingdom reminds me of, you know, royalty. So this is a royal song. And the last one that we're going to talk about today is what's called a wisdom psalm. And what does wisdom, what do you think of with wisdom? Think of smart, someone who knows a lot of things, wisdom psalm. So these songs talk about how, um, how to live a wise life, okay? Um, it highlights blessings blessings. Back in the day, um, in the Old Testament, we know it's a lot about the Israelites, right? Israelites were God's kingdom, God's chosen people. And they knew that if they were obedient to God, if they obeyed God's law, they would receive blessings. So in contrast, so there's a lot of talk in these wisdom songs about righteous versus wicked. So the righteous are those who obey God. Those are the people who are wise. And the wicked, those are people who don't obey God, who don't believe in God, who are rebellious against God. And the basic idea is it's wise to follow God. Wise to follow God to the Israelites because, well, if you follow God and you obey him, you, you're going to get blessings, right? So here's our wisdom psalm. It's the first psalm in the book of Psalms. So let's read it. Blessed, there's that word blessing, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. There's that word wicked. Or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. Meditates means to think about so whoever thinks about God's law day and night, oh, they're blessed. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. If you think about a tree, um, what does a tree need in order to grow? It needs water and sunlight, right? Just like this picture. And if they get water and sunlight, then they're going to have lots of fruit and their leaves are going to look really lively, right? So this is just kind of um, a metaphor. A metaphor is kind of like a symbol to what it means to be wise if you obey God's law. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Remember, we said that um, wisdom psalms, they contrast the righteous. Righteous are people who obey God. And wicked are those who don't, who don't believe in God, who rebel against him. We've talked a lot about righteousness in the past months with in Paul's letters, right? So people who are righteous are those who have faith, who believe in God, who believe in his good news, right? Um, who try to obey him. And so this is a, an Old Testament thinking about wisdom. Uh, it is wise to follow and obey God. And the Israelites, specifically the Israelites, if you obey God back then, well, you will receive blessing, okay? And our um, blessing, our, we know that 
blessing to us is if we believe in God, if we believe in the good news of Jesus, then what do we get, right? We get eternal life. We get this uh, relationship with God. And so, um, oops, I forgot. One more thing. One more slide here. So four types of Psalms. We've got the wisdom Psalm, the royal Psalm, the praise Psalm, and the lament Psalms, okay? And so now you know kind of what is the book of Psalms about? So if you ask, if your parents ask you, what did you learn in the video today? You can tell them, oh, there's four different types of Psalms. And they are the praise Psalms, the royal Psalms, the lament Psalms, and the wisdom Psalms, okay? And we looked at a few examples of what some of those Psalms are like in the Bible. Thank you guys for tuning in to Children's Church today. Hope to see you in the classes during the week. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.